Hey friends, today we're going to look at some new capability within the Entra portal or the Azure Active Directory Admin Center, whichever you prefer. Either way, it's an Azure AD premium feature called Conditional Access. Now, Conditional Access is not new by any means. Most organizations are using it to protect their Azure AD user identities and cloud-connected apps. If you're not, you absolutely should be. The new thing is that Microsoft have made it a load easier to get started with Conditional Access. They've created some common templates that cover important scenarios. With these templates, I'd say you could get up and running within, I don't know, a few minutes? Let me give it a go. So from the Azure Active Directory Admin Center or the Entra portal, you head down into Azure Active Directory and then down to Protect and Secure and then Conditional Access. Now, one of the annoying things about the Microsoft Entra Admin Center is that it doesn't seem to let you close this. Oh, there it does. It does. They've hidden the button. Okay, fine. So we're back on track. We've got these on the left-hand side. This isn't particularly useful for me right now. It's going to limit my space that I've got to start editing these policies. So I'm going to just close that down and we're ready to go. I've almost already used a whole minute talking about that. So first, we're going to go into the new policy. Now, if you start with new policies, you can see you've got to configure everything from scratch and it will enable the policy in report only mode by default. But I don't want to do that. I want to go back and from here, I'm going to choose new policy from template. Now, here you can see we've got two options with the template category. We've got identities or devices. We're going to start out with identities. Now we've got to select a template. There are Eight, is that eight? Eight policy to choose from. And the first one is require MFA for admins. This will require multi-factor authentication for privileged admin administrative accounts to reduce risk of compromise. This policy will target the same roles as security defaults. So uh, what do we choose next? And we check what it's going to do. It's going to call it CA001 require MFA for admins, put it in report only, target all of these roles, excluding the current user, and it's going to require MFA for all apps. Okay, done. Next. S securing security info registration. So when a user tries to register for MFA or self-service password reset, they will need to be, what, in a trusted location or require MFA, which is interesting. It's a bit circular, but so if they're registering MFA stuff, then they're going to need to be in a trusted location. If they aren't in a trusted location, they'll need to have already registered MFA. I guess that'll work for secure, uh, for, for self-service password reset. Anyway, try it. Next, block legacy auth. Simple, yeah, makes sense. Do that all the time. Next, require MFA for all users. Bit of a bigger deal. Let's take a look. So, it'll target all users, excluding the current user, for all apps require MFA. No exclusions there at all. Interesting. I would probably take a look at that and add some exclusions later on, but let's go. Next. Require MFA for guest access, definitely. If my users need MFA, then why wouldn't my guests? Next, require MFA for Azure management. Well, we've already got that configured for uh, for our admins, but I guess, yeah, can't hurt, can it? Next, now these two here are for uh, for uh, Azure AD Premium P2, which I do actually have in this environment, but I'm not going, most people don't have it, most organizations don't have it. If you do have Azure AD Premium P2, which comes with E5 security or Microsoft 365 E5 or Enterprise Ability and Security E5, sure, click that, take a look at these policies and off you go. For now, I'm going to go back 
take a look at devices, choose next. We are going to require compliant or hybrid Azure AD joined device for admins. That makes sense. Okay, so in order for an admin to do some administration, they need to be using an Azure AD joined, uh, a hybrid Azure AD joined device, so a domain joined device or a compliant device. Okay, that makes sense. Next, devices. Block access for unknown or unsupported device platforms. Definitely a lot of people who are trying to hack into environment will use a device platform that isn't supported, so it doesn't have any policies applied to it. Prevent users from having a persistent browser session, including Protect user access on unmanaged devices by preventing browser sessions for remaining signed in. I'll start that again. Protect user access from unmanaged devices by preventing browser sessions from remaining signed in after the device after the browser is closed and setting a sign in frequency to one hour on unmanaged devices. Let's take a look at how it knows. So if Oh, so if it's not um, domain joined and see, I would think that means that if it is domain joined and is compliant, then it will apply these rather than not. Hey, let's test it. Next. Devices. Require approved client apps and app protection. Yep, definitely. Both of those are good things. For iOS and Android, require an improved client app or app protection. Okay, that's not what it says. Never mind. Require a compliant or hybrid joined device or MFA for all users. Um, we already have that. But these policies are going to be anded. So. That will mean that people need MFA or this or this. Let's take a look at how that actually blends together later on. Next, devices use application force restrictions for unmanaged devices. So you, if with this policy, you use the external application like the cloud app for SharePoint or OneDrive or Exchange to specify what those app and force restrictions are. But then this actually enforces those restrictions using conditional access as well. So we'll choose next and create. Now you'll see all of these have been created in report only mode, which means they won't actually be affecting any users at all. Uh, there is one important call out there whilst they are in report only mode and they won't actually enforce the policy that we just created on the users that are targeted. If they're on iOS or an Android device, then they might be prompted to choose a device certificate. And that would be super confusing for them. Let me just show you what I mean by that. Uh, where is a policy that calls it out? Let's go with block legacy auth and see if it mentions it. Not mentioning it here. Quorum FA for all users. Probably because it's already on. Choose report only. Not mentioning it. Interesting. If I go into the Azure portal and do it from here. It's a different way to get to it in the Azure portal. Go down to security and conditional access. Now in this portal, which looks exactly the same, I'm sure I've seen a, a, a call out when you enable it in report only mode. And it doesn't appear to be there anymore. So that's good. Maybe is it because we are not targeting Anyway, not a problem. Be aware that 
if you are targeting this on iOS and Android devices, users on those devices may be prompted for a device certificate, which would be, as I say, very confusing for them. But this is for testing, so let's give it a test. Firstly, I'm not going to go in and test all of these scenarios right now. That would obviously take much longer than the few minutes I suggested it would take. But let's jump in and see what we can do. If we use the what if, this is the best way to initially test this to see how it's going to affect you. So you would choose your user or workload. You would choose your cloud app. You would choose every bit of condition that you want to select about this user. And then you would choose what if. And what happens there is it tells you what policies would apply. Let's very quickly go through that in the few minutes that I've got. I'm going to choose a user and uh, let's go with Alex Wilbur. We'll choose any cloud app. He will be using an iOS device, using a browser. Sign in risk and user risk aren't relevant. We'll choose what if. And then just at the bottom there, you can see what happens. So he has to have multi-factor authentication. He isn't able to use a, a persistent browser session and will be required to sign in every hour. He also needs an approved client app or app protection. So if he's using a browser, then he'll need to switch to Edge on iOS and Android and use app enforce restrictions. So whatever policies are applied to the cloud app he's trying to access, he will need to, the browser will automatically enforce that. So that's it. Those are now in place in report only. We can see the effect of those by going through these policies and uh, seeing the what if. Once you're happy with the concept, enable it in on mode and see what happens. 11 minutes, 11 and a half minutes and we've done what used to be days of work. I think that's pretty good. See you next time.